SpaceX just caught a 70-meter rocket with mechanical arms, and the world went crazy. But here's the truth nobody's talking about. That's not even the hardest part. The real monster? Transferring thousands of liters of frozen fuel between two starships orbiting at 27,000 kilometers per hour with zero gravity. NASA estimates 10 to 16 tanker flights just for one moon mission. Miss once, the entire $3 billion mission dies. Gwyn Shotwell promises success by 2026. Bold or impossible? Let's dive right in. You've seen the videos. Super heavy booster descending from the sky. Those mechanical arms, Mechazilla, closing around it like a science fiction dream. The internet exploded. SpaceX did it again. But here's what those viral clips don't show. That spectacular catch solves exactly 0% of Starship's actual mission. Falcon 9 has been landing boosters since 2015, over 300 times. Catching instead of landing? That's just refinement, not revolution. The real question, why does SpaceX need Starship fully reusable in the first place? Because of what comes next. Here's the brutal reality. When Starship reaches orbit after burning 3,400 tons of propellant, it arrives nearly empty, maybe 100 to 150 tons of fuel left. To reach the moon, it needs approximately 1,200 tons. To Mars, even more. The rocket that just launched can't go anywhere beyond low Earth orbit. It's stranded, a $3 billion orbital paperweight. NASA's official Artemis documents spell it out. 10 to 16 separate tanker launches just to fuel one lunar starship. Each tanker must launch, dock, transfer fuel, then deorbit. Repeat this 10 to 16 times. One failure? The entire mission collapses. This isn't SpaceX being dramatic. This is physics. The Soviet Union launched Sputnik in 1957. We landed on the moon in 1969. We've built space stations, sent probes beyond the solar system, landed rovers on Mars, and nobody, not NASA, not Russia, not China, has ever transferred large-scale cryogenic propellant in orbit. The reason? It's a physics nightmare. On Earth, gravity pulls liquid to the bottom of tanks. In orbit, there's no bottom. Liquids float in blobs, stick to walls, drift unpredictably. You can't just connect a hose and pump. Worse, Starship uses liquid methane negative 161 degrees Celsius and liquid oxygen negative 183 degrees Celsius. At those temperatures, any heat causes boil off. The liquid turns to gas, pressure builds, and you risk rupturing tanks or venting propellant into space. Now the full picture, two starships, each 20 stories tall, docked together, orbiting at 27,000 kilometers per hour. You must pump hundreds of tons of ultra-cold fuel between them while maintaining temperature control, preventing boil-off, managing pressure, and avoiding contamination. The ISS uses small amounts of room-temperature hypergolic fuels for thrusters. What SpaceX is attempting operates at a completely different scale. This is where Gwyn Shotwell's statement becomes critical. As SpaceX president, she's typically the realistic voice compared to Musk's aggressive timelines. When she speaks, the industry listens. But recently, Shotwell claimed SpaceX expects orbital refueling by 2026. She joked, I hope it's not as hard as some of my engineers think. That's 16 months away. And here's why skepticism is justified. In 2016, Musk announced humans would reach Mars by 2024. Nobody's left low Earth orbit yet. In 2019, he promised Starship orbital flights by 2020, the first attempt didn't happen until 2023, and it exploded. Lunar landing dates shifted from 2022 to 2024, now 2026 at earliest. SpaceX has launched Starship five times. Every flight ended with explosion or controlled destruction. Yes, they're progressing, but better than exploding on the pad is a low bar when promising orbital refueling in 16 months. The pattern? Announce ambitious timeline? Push teams hard? achieve progress, miss deadline by years, eventually succeed, announce next impossible timeline. Based on history, add two to three years to Shotwell's claim. Maybe 2028 or 2029, 
for first real attempt. Here's what concerns NASA most. Artemis III, America's moon return, depends entirely on this working. NASA awarded SpaceX $2.9 billion to develop the human landing system. The plan? Astronauts launch on SLS in Orion, reach lunar orbit, transfer to Starship HLS, land on moon, return. But that Starship HLS only gets to lunar orbit if refueling works. Here's the actual sequence. Launch 1. Depot Starship reaches orbit, becomes the gas station. Launches 2 to 15. Tanker Starships launch individually, each carrying approximately 150 tons of propellant. Dock with depot, transfer fuel, deorbit. Repeat 8 to 16 times. Launch 16. HLS. Starship launches, docks with depot, fills tanks. Launch 17. HLS finally fires engines toward moon. 17 launches, 17 chances for weather delays, technical failures, docking problems, and every tanker flight must succeed. Cryogenic boil-off means fuel gradually vaporizes. The entire sequence needs to happen within weeks. Apollo, one Saturn V, one launch. Moon in three days. Starship requires perfect execution across 17 missions. The complexity is staggering. Before this sounds like complete doom, SpaceX has mastered one critical element, automated docking. Crew Dragon and Cargo Dragon have performed dozens of autonomous ISS dockings. The spacecraft approaches, aligns perfectly, connects. No human intervention. SpaceX does this routinely. That experience transfers directly to Starship to Starship docking. The sensors, algorithms, control systems, all proven in space repeatedly. Docking a 13-ton Dragon differs from a 100-ton Starship, but the core technology is battle-tested. This gives SpaceX a massive advantage over any competitor starting from zero. But docking is maybe 20% of orbital refueling. The other 80% happens after connection. Two Starships are docked. Now the hard part begins. Problem one, settling propellant. In microgravity, fuel floats unpredictably. SpaceX will use small thrusters creating tiny acceleration, ullage thrust, to push liquid toward outlet ports. Too much waste fuel. Too little doesn't settle properly. Problem two, the transfer itself. You're connecting two pressurized vessels with ultra-cold liquid at slightly different temperatures and pressures. Wrong connection creates thermal shock, pressure spikes, or backflow. Pumps must handle hundreds of tons while maintaining precise temperature control. Problem three, boil off management. Transfer friction generates heat, vaporizing some liquid. That gas needs venting or reliquification. Pressure builds otherwise. But venting wastes propellant and creates debris clouds. Problem four, verification. How do you confirm success? Sensors throughout tanks must monitor fuel levels, temperature, pressure in real time while traveling through space. Problem five, time. Longer docking means more boil off, greater orbital mechanics factors, higher micrometeorite risk. Transfer must happen in hours. SpaceX hasn't done any of this, not in testing, not in space, not yet. For Shotwell's timeline to work, SpaceX needs first routine orbital flights, not experiments, Operational missions where both booster and ship reach orbit, survive re-entry, land intact. They haven't done this once. They need dozens of successes to prove reliability. Second, modified starships with docking ports and fuel transfer systems. These don't exist yet. Third, small-scale propellant transfer tests, maybe just a few tons. Then gradual scaling. All in 16 months? While launching Falcon 9? Building Starlink? Managing other programs? Unless SpaceX is hiding massive parallel development, the timeline doesn't compute. Orbital refueling isn't just about Starship. It's about humanity's space future. If SpaceX cracks this, everything changes. Build enormous spacecraft in orbit, refuel them, send them anywhere. Mars missions become feasible, asteroid mining possible, Jupiter's moons accessible. If they can't, Starship becomes an expensive orbital delivery truck useful for satellites, unable to fulfill its purpose of making humanity multiplanetary. NASA bet Artemis on this technology. 
Without Starship HLS refueling, there's no American moon landing this decade. The backup plan? There isn't one. China is watching. Their space program systematically hits milestones. Space station, lunar samples, Mars rover. If SpaceX fails and NASA stalls, China might land astronauts on the moon first, in the 2030s. Here's something concerning. SpaceX has been unusually quiet about specific refueling technical approaches. We know they're working on it. But unlike other developments where Musk tweets diagrams and engineers give presentations, orbital refueling remains mostly unknown. Why? Two possibilities. One, they're still figuring it out and won't promise what they can't deliver. Two, they've solved it and it's too valuable to share. Given SpaceX's history of showcasing achievements, the silence suggests option one. If they'd cracked it, we'd know. Musk would have tweeted months ago, which means Shotwell's 2026 claim relies on breakthroughs happening right now, or it's another optimistic projection that will slip. Every day without orbital refueling solved increases pressure on Artemis, Mars ambitions, and commercial space. If SpaceX, with all their resources and talent, can't solve this, who can? Blue Origin can't reach orbit yet. ULA's rockets aren't designed for refueling. NASA's counting on contractors. SpaceX is humanity's best shot at cracking this problem. And even they might not pull it off in the promised time frame. So what happens in 2026? Either we witness the most significant spaceflight advancement since Apollo, or another deadline slips while SpaceX continues grinding away. One certainty, those spectacular booster catches make great videos, but they're just the opening act. The real show happens when two starships meet in orbit and successfully transfer hundreds of tons of fuel. That's the moment everything changes, or the moment we realize how far we still have to go. Every day without orbital refueling, solved increases pressure on Artemis, Mars ambitions, and commercial space. If SpaceX, with all their resources and talent, can't solve this, who can? Blue Origin can't reach orbit yet. ULA's rockets aren't designed for refueling. NASA's counting on contractors. SpaceX is humanity's best shot at cracking this problem. And even they might not pull it off in the promised time frame. So what happens in 2026? Either we witness the most significant spaceflight advancement since Apollo, or another deadline slips while SpaceX continues grinding away. One certainty, those spectacular booster catches make great videos, but they're just the opening act. The real show happens when two starships meet in orbit and successfully transfer hundreds of tons of fuel. That's the moment everything changes, or the moment we realize how far we still have to go. Landing Starship is impressive, but it's not the challenge keeping engineers awake at night. Orbital refueling is. Without it, Starship can't reach the moon, can't reach Mars, can't fulfill any of its deep space promises. Shotwell says 2026. History says add two to three years. Either way, this is the technology that determines whether humans become multiplanetary or stay stuck in low Earth orbit. Now I want to hear from you. Do you think SpaceX can pull off orbital refueling by 2026? Or is this another overly optimistic timeline? Drop your prediction in the comments below. If you found this breakdown valuable, hit that like button. It helps Space Hub reach more space enthusiasts like you. Subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss our next deep dive into the real challenges facing space exploration. We don't just report the hype, we show you what actually matters. Thanks for watching Space Hub. See you in the next one.